Okay, hello everyone. Um, got the spindle all set up, coolant supply and everything done. Uh, real quickly just show you what I have going on here. I went and added in another box in the back here to plug in my pump for the coolant. Um, ran a line over to plug into the outlet here. Now I only have two poles coming off. The neutral is mixed with the ground and then one hot wire since that's uh, 220 going through there. Um, and then I also pull the lead off of there and uh, just attach it to the back bolt. So now I have a ground in the uh, machine. So <clears throat> I'll bring it up here and show you how I got things set up here. Now I have my coolant lines coming in and I have them of course hooked into the uh, uh, compression fittings here that I have set. And like I said earlier just needed to uh, heat the end of the tubes up a little bit. They slid right on. Do have to press down on this nut just a little bit to get the thread started. But it went through pretty good. And then of course I have my separate uh, wire attachment here for a quick disconnect for the spindle. Put a little bit of conduit cover on it to dress it up a little bit. And uh, what I have set up here then is just whenever I turn on the switch for the VFD the pump automatically turns on since I put the other box in the back. And one thing about the VFD, it takes a, about 10 seconds for it to kick on. Um, I'm not sure why, but I have a pretty good idea that it's probably uh, to charge up the capacitors. And as you can see, I got the coolant coming in now. Have a little bit of antifreeze in there. And once it gets pumped through, it starts pumping through and feeds back down through the system and for right now all I have is I just have a bucket set up back there and the pumps out and drains back in now for the spindle I still have to uh, get it set up in uh, on the board down here to be controlled by the PC uh, temporarily what I did was I just kind of hooked in a switch for on off And then I also have a little pot switch here set up so I can turn it down manually and I can just, uh, you know, set my RPMs just based by turning the knob here. So it's working pretty good. And what I may do, uh, what I'm thinking about doing is actually making a, a separate little uh, uh, setup box that I'd uh, make it kind of mobile and I'll have switches on it so I can maybe set this to manual or PC um, and then I can even control the RPMs of the spindles for instance if I'm setting up for working on a piece the first time uh, what I can do is play with the RPMs a little bit and get the speed uh, correct for the feed rates that I have set up in the program and so forth and that way I can establish what RPMs I need to, to use if I want to repeat the program and then I can key them into the software. So, uh, works pretty good. Everything's functioning. I just have to get it tied into the uh, breakout board now and get things set up to be controlled uh, from the software. And I think from there we'll pretty much be ready to start making some cuts. Um, I did kind of do a little thing here in the just to playing around here. Just manually went in and jogged a few slots real quick with an end mill. Uh, it cuts, so <laughs> we'll get some uh, other video here shortly in the not too distant future, and uh, hopefully we'll be up and running and starting to make some stuff. And from there, what I got left to do is I got a uh, Attach some limit switches. I'm just going to use cherry switches initially. I want to have uh, stops at both ends of the axes. And then I'm looking at uh, maybe getting some of these Hall Effect switches for actual home positions for more accuracy. And then I have to work on setting things up for the dust collection. And I'll review that probably uh, next video. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching.